And back here on a Tuesday morning, going to be another great day here in the city. I think Jeanette Dunham will be with us later on this morning, talk about tourism here in this area. So it's pretty we'll have busy. her on in just a moment. And got a crowd on for the remainder of the week. Right now, let's take time out to do a Ask Ann. Ann, I'm going to kind of throw these two in together here. But uh, the other day, there was a big article a couple of Sundays ago in the Decatur Daily talking about restaurants and how they can hardly get people. Nobody wants to work on a Sunday. And the deal was stating, and they quoted a few restaurant owners from around the area, that the Sunday crowd, the after-church crowd, if you will, when they mm -hmm. go to a restaurant, they are the most, well, they complain rude, all the time. They're grateful. ungrateful, and they don't tip. They're rude and cheap. Rude and cheap. Now, do you know anything about that, Anne? No. How's your Sunday crowd? We kind of slow on Sunday, so we don't really have, but they ain't rude. rude. Well, here's what a letter to the editor at Decatur Daily said over the weekend. An article labeling churchgoers, church crowd, ruling, ru ruling the rude church crowd, says the group of habit lunching in restaurants after church creates great strain on those businesses, mostly because of rudeness and low tipping. The word tip and tipping appeared 11 times in that article, according to this person. Mm -hmm. Apologies seem to be in order on behalf of the church crowd. I apologize, this writer says, to the restauranter who elected to close on Sunday open a Monday to attract more cheerful diners who are better tippers. My sincere apologies to the servers serving the Sunday crowd, all the while knowing the tips will be small. I am sorry. <laughs> this is written from a lady from Hartzell. I do offer a possible reason for low Sunday tipping. Many churchgoers are retired and on fixed incomes. A small tip might be all they can afford after paying for lunch. A tip is a gift, not an obligation. But if a group exceeds a certain number that it is uh, gratuity, is added to the bill and you pay it even if the service was lousy. lousy. To the ministers who mm. follow up on the complaints and make sure every word of criticism was heard, I'm sorry. I now offer a suggestion to the church crowd. On Saturdays, put together and refrigerate a crock pot of goodies. Early Sunday morning, plug it in. After church, you can enjoy a good meal at home, securing the knowledge you are offending nobody. What do you think, Ann? Mm -hmm. That's what they need to do. You know, you got rude people everywhere you go. You know, mm -hmm. they, people just rude. Now, what makes them that way? <laughs> they sell. Because let me tell you what happened to us one day last week. One man coming in, you know, he was chewing tobacco. He said, well, I don't want this date. I want that right there. Fresh, open, fresh thing, ain't never been open. Mm -hmm. And the girl, she said, ain't I said, no. He got to get that. And then he come to the counter. He said, well, let me talk to the manager. I went to the counter. He said, why I can't get that? I said, because that's not open and you need to get that with that date on it. I said, because we don't get reimbursed if we can't sell it. I said, so it ain't like it's old. They look on the dates and think, you know, it goes out of date in less than a month. That's wrong. I don't care how much tobacco you chew. If you can't sell it with the date that we got up there, ain't no point in you getting it. So what happened? I didn't give it to him. He said, well, I won't be back. That's fine. <laughs> you don't you think I'm finna open a fresh thing of tobacco on account of he want a certain date? We don't even keep tobacco a month. We don't even keep it a week. We order tobacco every week. So what I look like open another fresh thing just come in on account of he didn't want the date that was up there. I've been coming in here over a year, this, that, that. It don't make no difference. See, people come in there and they throw all this at you and I'm going to call this person. You can call whoever you please, <laughs> in which I don't care. You can call whoever you want to. You either have to buy that or you don't get nothing. You know. I tobacco don't go out of date in two months. I see you have that customer's always right policy going oh, on. Hey, don't you know that? Wait a right. minute. Hold. <laughs> Let's not even go there. Because let me tell you what y'all customers do. Y'all customers come in the store with an attitude problem because you done got off on the wrong side of the bed and you want to take it out on the first person you get to, which would be somebody at GIF. I'm the wrong person to take your frustration out on. You go, in. <laughs> so people, you know, if I got having a bad day, you don't want to see it. I don't want we're if you're having a bad, bad day, day, don't take it out on the first person you get to, and that's what you're somebody in the store. If you're having a bad day, keep going. Go on, on down the road. <laughs> Cook your food at home. Don't come in the store want to go off on somebody in the store. Go back home and yeah, go to bed. Are you saying everybody's not as happy as I am when they come in? No. You have them rude people. Happy. 
You have them. That customer's always right. I don't go by that because customers ain't always right. Oh, amen. They have more flaws and they look <laughs> attitudes when they be coming in there, especially on the gas. Will you please cut the pump on? Man, I'm not paying for nobody's gas out of my pocket. I'm not cutting no pump on because the various ones you know be the ones who drive off. I'm not paying for that gas. So y'all don't pump any gas unless hmm. it's paid, prepaid. If you got a charge, you can get them pumps cut off. If you ain't got no charge, you better come on in and leave me something. And I ain't talking about no <laughs> 5 or $10 before you get that pump on. So people are complaining to you about the gas, about yeah. not having the pump on. it ain't my problem. <laughs> you need to blame these folks who driving off with this gas. You know, I understand gas is high. I'll put gas in my truck. But no, don't get mad at us because we won't cut them pumps on. Because that ain't our problem. You get mad at them folks who coming in there ain't paying and want to have a crowd out there at the pump and they look, cut the pump on. And then you cut off. it on, they drive off. We have regular folks come in there every day because they don't put their credit card in. The credit card didn't take. And we look out there and see it's a regular customer. We cut the pump on, guess what? They go. Hmm. Is that a big problem nowadays, drive offs? Oh. So but now, everybody's requiring it. It ain't just y'all. It ain't. No. Thank you. Now, I can go down the street. You go down the street, you still going to have to pay first. Just right. go and pay for the gas and quit whining, whining <laughs> and get it over with. Well, let me ask you another question off that subject. <laughs> Way to go. <laughs> Here's a woman complaining that her husband and all the boyfriends she's ever had are cheap. <sighs> And she wants to know, no she says too. she's worth more than that. How is it she's always stuck with cheapskates? Do like me, be by yourself. <laughs> Don't worry about no cheap man, just be by yourself. Why are men cheap? Because y'all are. You got to pay for gas? You got to pay for everything. <laughs> why is that? Why is that? Why do men have to be stuck with everything? What you mean? Because we do. When it comes to going to court and things, the man usually gets screwed no matter how you look at it. Well, see, I'm not like that. I figure if you pay for one day and we go out again, I might pay for that one. But don't think you, I'm, not, I'm just going to do it all the time now. But now, if I come to you and ask you, look, <laughs> now, if you date me and you know I got a house and I got bills to pay, if I come to you and say, look, I want such and so and so, and you ain't going to get it, you gone. <laughs> you telling me. You take advantage of men like that. That ain't taking advantage. Yeah, it is. Baby, you got you, to, you got to pay the lay. Oh, you got to what? Oh, you got don't to say pay that again. to lay. Oh. Pay the lay. What sounds like something illegal might be going on? If that ain't illegal, <laughs> huh? If that's your woman, if I'm in the paper, well, it is. No, it ain't. How yeah, it is. illegal. Cause it's illegal here. It's not illegal. It's oh, an no, 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 You no, can't no, be no, charged no, for no. how somebody come in and sleep with you. Oh man, always. Wait a pay. minute. Oh please, <laughs> thank you. Old men do it all the time. Oh man. All, all men always well, pay. So, the so way down the line. Cash, but, but, but look, look okay, I need you to wash the machine. Oh, oh, wait uh -huh. a minute. If that's your woman, you're going to help her regardless, right or wrong. Well, maybe, maybe. All right, then. Ain't no maybe either. You is. You're going you gonna to either help her or she's going to find somebody else. Well, ain't no woman going to be with you and you ain't doing nothing for her. Is you crazy? Are you speechless? No, I'm severely overweight. <laughs> <laughs> this has been another edition. I'd advise y'all, if you go into Ann's place of employment currently. With a smile on your face. <laughs> when you go in there, don't ask for sardines because they ain't got none this morning. Get a man. <laughs> Ooh, men's. You can live without them, women's. Because I do it every day. We'll take a break and be right back. And Jeanette, don't leave. You're next. Y'all hang on on a Tuesday morning edition of Cooper Company Live right here in Athens. Oh,